Right, dearly departed Derby on, it was Sunday lunchtime, I didn't get to watch, I was working, which is annoying, would have wanted to do a watch along on this one and couldn't. It was Sheffield United 1, Fulham 1, and we went into this game saying these are our two lowest dearly departed teams and neither of them have a point. So either someone's going to get their first win or they're both going to get off the mark with some points. Now, from a dearly departed point of view, which nobody really cares about other than me or the watchers of this channel, it's nice that they both got off the mark, but both managers would have rather, you know, let's let's have a winner in this game, gamble on it being me. And it was a draw, which it's okay. It's As I say, it gets you off the zero, but you'd definitely be rather having a win at, you know, five games in now. Uh, let's have a look at the Blades team. So, that's interesting, isn't it? Ender Stevens now is the solution in at centre-back. Although, look, it's not going to last very long, is it? So, uh, Ramsdale in goal, Basham, Egan, Stevens. Remember, they're coping without the excellent Jack O'Connell, who's going to be out for a while. Max Lowe plays wing-back, Bulldog the other side. But, 19 minutes, Lowe goes out and it's back to... Jack Robinson at centre half and I don't know if I'm Jack Robinson I'm also like oh look I'm back in by default here because of an injury and Wilder has tried me and he wanted to give Stevens a go there so we'll see how that pans out. Ollie Norwood back in midfield with Berger and Lundstrom. McGoldrick, McBurney up top new signing Brewster on the bench. Now I've looked at the heat maps and that formation does look accurate so Look, when we've talked about Leeds and we've talked about Villa, there's a very obvious difference here that they're very set in their formation, team shape and first 11. These two teams, well, Sheffield United more so, but Fulham definitely aren't. We've seen about, well, we've probably seen a different system in every game and new players arriving. Uh, sadly for um, Scott Parker, Joachim Anderson came in he would have been brought in a centre half and immediately got injured. So bad news there. He tries a three at the back here. So Ariola in goal. Um, Adarabio, who we've seen on loan at West Brom and Blackburn last season, comes in. He's playing Premier League football now with Reem and Ina, who Parker seems quite high on, obviously. Um, maybe Parker solving his right back issues by literally not playing one here. Three centre backs and win backs. But so back three, back five. Is it matching up with Sheffield United or? Is it a new system he wants to try? Anthony Robinson, I'd fancy as a wing back. Ivan Cavaliero as a wing back? Really? This guy's main trick is playing front right, cutting in and sticking curlers in with his left foot. So, yeah, interesting where we are with Fulham in terms of trying so much different stuff. Uh, and Guisa and Kearney. Then, some good threat here now with Lookman and Loftus Cheek flanking Mitrovic. So, They've almost made it more stable and more attacking at the same time, if this works out. And again, it's ruthless, isn't it? People like Marek Rodek and Joe Bryan, who were so important to the promotion, left on the bench. Here is a big chance for Ollie McBurney there on the near post. Um, gets a good contact on that header, but it's straight at uh, Ramsdale. Uh, sorry, not Ramsdale. Arrow uh, in the goal. There is a handball there by... Who is that? Is that, that? That is Robinson, isn't it? Must have been the substitute. Um, going up with Mitrovic there, penalised for handball. But Mitro tries to stick the penalty down the middle. Billy Sharp's going to show him how to do it properly later. And hits the top of the bar. And over it goes. Mitro missing the penalty. And I wanted to take a freeze frame of this because um, we did the watch-along full and Brentford in the... League Cup, and okay, it's the Carabao Cup, whatever you want to call it. Um, often reserve teams played in there and they had the air of a friendly, but Lookman came in and really made a difference. And he does seem to have made a difference full stop in Fulham's 11. And look where he receives the ball here. He is going to dribble. He gets one favourable bounce, but it's brilliant. Um, dribbles it all the way into the box and then lashes it past Ramsdale for the opening goal. 1 0 to. Fulham. Uh, penalty down the other end now. And again, that's Robinson, isn't it? Uh, he makes the challenge there, just gets there first. It's a bit clumsy by Mitro, who sort of fly kicks and 
Um, yeah, it's one of those where you get penalised for mistiming the tackle, don't you? You get their second and he kicks underneath the leg of Robinson. Penalty given and Billy Sharp, if you can play spot the ball there, it is nestling in the back of the net. He slams it straight down the middle. Billy Sharp, the old master with no doubt his 1,000th goal of his career or whatever. And he makes it 1-1. One, one. Here are the numbers. Uh, we'll see how it plays. 59-41 in possession for Fulham. 15-10 to 10 shots for Fulham, but six shots on target. Each always evens out, doesn't it? 5-2 uh, to two on the corners is some indication of territory. Look at the big chances, though. Three big chances to two for Sheffield United. Obviously, we can take... Well, you can and can't take one off for both because they both had penalties. However, Sheffield United scored theirs and Fulham missed theirs. So pretty tight game, this one. I think looking at the eye test, looking at the numbers, that's one you could put in there. Could have gone either way bracket. Let me know what you think if you're a Sheffield United or a Fulham fan on that. I'm sure both sets of fans, if you'd said, look, draw is not an option in this game. One team has to win, would have taken the gamble for the three points. But a draw is what we get. Let's look down uh, the left-hand side, or the left-hand side as I'm looking, is Sheffield United's fixtures there. And look, both teams have stopped the rot, haven't they? Ignore that bottom one, that's last season. But defeat against Wolves, then, well, the red card, yeah, OK. Then lose a tight game against Leeds. Again, a bit of a wobbly refereeing decision with David Luiz in the Arsenal game. But finally, I, I guess something goes for them in Mitro missing the penalty and they get their first point here, Sheffield United, in a fairly tight game. It feels like the first time they've been in a tight game and they've not lost it. Nothing's gone against them, either other team taking their chances or these mitigating factors with a couple of shirt pull refereeing decisions we've spoken about for Blades. So, look, you've lost your first four. Uh, a draw is an improvement, isn't it, for goodness sake. Um, Fulham, same thing here. They would have loved a clean sheet. They really, really would have loved a clean sheet. But uh, Mitro defended in his box there, conceding the penalty. However, if I'm Scott Parker and I look at the first three games, I'm like, oh my God, uh, just goals conceded everywhere. Then I look at those recent two and I would be like okay we've been competitive and we've only conceded two goals in those games need to work towards a clean sheet if the goals aren't going to be forthcoming but there's definitely a sense of an improving trajectory for both obviously go figure I know I'll get it in the comments can't be much worse than lose 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 can it but there you go um and sorry, I just wanted to, before we go to the table there, just to wrap up, look, Palace now and West Brom for Fulham. Will they be targeting those? Look at Sheffield United's next two, Liverpool and Man City. I know which two fixtures I would rather have. If you enjoyed this clip, why not go and check out the whole video? You can find that and all of my other content at my channel, the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. And while you're there, why not hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for regular notifications?